so Derek's absolutely right. The genesis of this project was Shy Hack Night, um, and it's taken on quite a life of its own. Uh, a little bit about Steve here. Well, first of all, I'm the D Microsoft's Director of Technology and Civic Innovation, and Steve, as you know, is a .NET and web developer. I met Steve probably six years ago. Um, we're both members of a group called ITCAN. It stands for IT Knowledge Abilities Network. And this is a group of people, um, differently abled people. It's a professional development group, and um, I, th I saw sneaking in here, rolling around, was uh, Pat, Pat Maher. Are you still here, Pat? Yeah, the there he is, in the back. <laughs> so Pat started this organization, and he's sort of the, um, the spiritual leader of it. And it's a, it's a great organization to, um, to learn about professional and technical topics. Uh, but I use it to learn about how differently abled people are managing around the city. So Steve and I have been friends for a while. He, uh, he tells me quite a bit about um, some of his travel challenges. And let's think about this. Um, when you use a map like Bing Maps, which you all use religiously, right? <laughs> right? Much better than the other guys, right? Um, when, you're going some, when you're going somewhere, and let's see, let's, let's say directions, um, where am I going? 222 Merchandise Mart. Merchand, merch and here it is. I can't spell tonight. When you're going somewhere, let's say you're driving somewhere, right? How are you going to optimize that? You're going to optimize it for the, the short, quickest route, right? And when you're walking some, somewhere, um, you typically optimize for the shortest distance. And when you're taking public transportation, you're typically optimizing for the best route. Well, a person who is managing with a disability is typically optimizing for safety. Well, let me explain that. Traditional maps give you walking instructions using the sidewalk, right? We don't give a lot of thought to sidewalks, but um, sidewalks are a really integral part of how we get to where we need to go. But they're more than that to citizens who are managing disabilities. Sidewalks are the things that enable those people to not only navigate the city, but also to use other forms of transportation. So things like buses, transit, paratransit, uh, et cetera. So keep that in the back of your mind for a moment. When people are managing disability, there's a lot of planning that goes into a trip. For example, um, Steve, I, and by the way, I should mention that I'm speaking for Steve, and I'm honored to be speaking for him tonight, uh, not only because he's a great guy, but he's what we call at IT Can the most vocal, non-vocal guy we know. So <laughs> it's, it's, awesome, it's awesome to be his, it's awesome to be his, I know, you're going to get sick of that. Uh, it, it's awesome to be his voice. Um, I, I sort of take for granted that Luke's, I sometimes call him Luke's, Luke's uh, just shows up at these meetings, right? Uh, we attend a lot of these meetings together downtown. He shows up at Shy Hack Night, he comes to IT Can, he comes to Chicago City Data User Group. It never really dawned on me until a few years ago how much planning it takes for him coming downtown from his home in Wheaton. Um, Steve did some work recently with the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, um, which is in, Pat, what city is that in? E e ALCA? It's downtown? Okay, up in Rosemont. Steve was taken two and a half hours each way to get to his job, okay? And so he had to plan all that because it would just absolutely suck to plan a two and a half hour trip only to be, not be able to roll where you need to roll from that point and roll back. Um, tonight, what did it take, take, take? It takes him about an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half to get to Shy Hack night. Um, so, you know, like everybody else, Luke's loves his independence, and he likes using public transit. In fact, he started using public transit about 15 years ago, and it really opened up the world to him as public transit, first of all, provides the most flexibility for him, and um, the other thing is that he doesn't have to rely on anybody else, so again, his independence. Um, and so here, he mentions the last mile was impossible, so he had to take a taxi. So... Um, 
he still ha- once he takes public transportation's great and it's been providing him with what he needs, but he still has to plan how he's going to roll once he gets off of public transportation. So now go back to sidewalks. When sidewalks and curb cuts are in need of repair, they may have the potential to stop him and other differently abled people in their tracks. When he's planned his route, um, he's expected a curb cut in good condition, and it ends up being in poor condition, or the street's under repair, um, and the grade is too high. So the curb cut can be perfectly fine, but they've scraped away the street because they're doing um, street repairs. Now the grade is too high for is too steep for him to get his chair down. Um, you know, he may have to do some things. He may have to backtrack one or two blocks. Sometimes he has to backtrack a mile uh, just across the street. Beyond being inconvenient and frustrating, it's also extremely treacherous. Um, curb cuts across, you know, if he, if he doesn't approach a curb cut in the right way or he has some problem, he could do some great bodily injury. He's, he's tipped this chair over more than once. Um, this chair is about 300 pounds. Steve, somewhere between 150 and 200, I'll never tell. Um, and, you know, when he, when he tips this thing, um, it's, you're welcome. It, it's really, it, think about what it, what it takes to, to write himself. And then also consider other forms uh, where, of disability where mobility is hampered. So imagine having to navigate these things with low vision or if you're blind or something else where you're using a cane. So, whereas Steve had to reroute himself, there are others who are differently able that may not be able to overcome that situation, and they have to go home after planning this trip. Um, Even worse, there are people with disabilities who just don't go out, right? And when I say don't go out, I mean, you know, Steve blogged about this. They don't leave their homes, at least not leave their homes without other people. So, um, now I'm going to be in Steve's voice for a minute. Steve went around the city, um, and I think, Vance, you went went with him too, right? Last week, we went uh, from the train station, Ogilvy, where he comes in. Yeah. And we we strolled, which is S-T slash roll. Right, right. (laughs) Strolled, roll, between Ogilvy and here. Well, let me show you some examples of what, what he's found over, over a while. So this is, typi- th- this is what you would typically think of as an obstacle. So cracked sidewalks. And by the way, no disrespect to the city. The city wants to fix these things, but the city has to know about these things to fix these things. Okay, so cracked sidewalks. Something like this uh, may be unpassable with a chair, but would be really, really difficult with, uh, without your sight. Occasion, you don't see this a lot, but there are occasionally places where curb cuts are missing, like over here. Mm. Now here is something that I thought was really interesting. As you're approaching mm. this crosswalk, things look okay, mm. but when you get close to it, you see that, um, the, that there's issues that are going to keep you from uh, getting around. Um, this is a really interesting one. Uh, I think this is over by Andy's Jazz Club here. Uh, if you take a look, there's not a really good, easy way to get a chair down. And to Steve's point, you know, from where his vantage point is, he may not see that until he gets close to it. Um, and there have been times where um, he's not been able to stop his chair uh, all that easily. Oh yeah, ice. Ice is another is another problem here. Okay. Areas where there's sidewalk missing altogether. Uh, this is in the city. Yeah. Sidewalks that are pitched towards the street. So it looks like there's a nice wide sidewalk, but actually part of the sidewalk is pitching, and that makes it innavigable. Some, I think that must be State Street. Okay, now, this is my favorite. <laughs> I'm not an urban planner. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, this, this, one's, this one's just is, is crazy because you, you have to get permits and shit to get stuff like this, but 
Um, it looks like this kind of grew there. Um, <laughs> and then here is one that grew there. So it, it, the, the tree itself doesn't make it inavigable, but you need to have space for the tree to grow, and that's made this part inavigable. Um, this one was really interesting. Um, oddly shaped curb cuts. So there is a curb cut, and there is a, what do you call that, a skid, pa a skid pad there? Uh, what plate? A detection, a detection plate. plate. Oh, is that right? I thought it was for traction. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Vance. Um, and, for, <laughs> and, and, to, and, and Luke's points out, you know, getting to it is, is kind of a maze. So, sidewalks with too much, curb cuts with a steep ramp. I think you get the picture here, right? So, Enter Shy Safe Path. Let me go to Shy Safe Path. Okay, so Shy Safe Path was a project that started here at Shy Hack Night, <clears throat> and Steve entered it into the uh, Center for Neighborhood Technologies Urban Sustainability Apps Competition. We came in second, which was great. Um, but let me show you how this works. Um, as I mentioned before, the city does uh, want to help the situation, so it has to know about it to address it. So Shy Safe Path does a few different things. First of all, it helps by allowing a user to report a hazard. The design is extremely simple. Um, you can go to report on a hazard, um, and then using the phone's GPS, you can upload the image, and you don't have to do this right while you're there, right? It's kind of like C-click fix. You could take a picture, and later, when you're in a more convenient surrounding, since the app captures the location the, that the photo was taken from the embedded metadata in the photo, and saves, you know, that saves the user the effort of typing and, uh, and the time, et cetera. Or they can go in and, and type the location. Going back here, the user can see a map of all the reported issues with bad sidewalks. So I'll go to a region here, and I'll click on it, and I can see there were three reports. And this goes, gets it from the city data portal, right? OK, so what happens is it's submitted with the app, and then it's in the, and then it's in the data portal. And I, I don't know if you can really see this that easily. Uh, but it shows you when it was created, when it was updated, and what the status is. So a person managing a disability now can go plan their trip, and as they're planning their trip, they can see the things that were open. Ultimately, uh, so this will save them both time and serious injury. Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to have both 311 data in there and crowdsource data, and that crowdsource get data to get into the 311 data so that it appears right away on the map. And of course, it's much better to have it in 311 because then you can track when it's fixed. We haven't really figured out how you do this thing where it's crowdsourced, but then when it gets fixed, it goes away. So that's something that we'll, we have to think about. And if anybody is interested in helping us think about that, that's one of our challenges. Um, they are also working on a routing feature. Um, I don't think it is up right now. Uh, but it's kind of your, your standard routing feature, except that, once again, you're, um, you're optimizing for safety. And, this, and if I click on plan trip, it's not going to actually go anywhere because I think the docker is uh, not, not running at the moment. But you get the picture that uh, it's a different optimization model. Um, so the vision for this is to have the user so have both optimized routes with some kind of algorithm, but also crowd-suggested routes, so crowd-sourced routes for trips within the city. And it'll take into an account accessibility of not just the sidewalks, but the sidewalks, the curbs, and public transit, thus being, again, optimized for safety. Um, again, it's a fairly simple in display, but that in itself is a design consideration that's very, very important for differently abled people. 
So we're looking at uh, both inclusive design and universal design, and how do you design this for all the different types of disabilities that are out there. It's, it's going to be a long path, and uh, we could use your assistance. So um, correct me if I'm wrong. The assistance that we need is we need um, developer assistance. We need mappers. Um, we could still use um, somebody who knows how to think about uh, user experience for the differently abled. With that, we will take questions. And, and when we take questions, you have to give me a few seconds um, so I can get Luke's answers. Theodore, yeah. uh, another IT CAN member. Yeah. I, I uh, tried to use the, the site this, just like a couple of days ago. I still try to put Western and Yvonne in there. You want to take it? He kept saying, put the address in and I put the address in. So what I found was, the question is, he, he put addresses in and it wouldn't take it. There's a little bit of a lag between when you type it and when um, the thing actually shows up. So give it, give it a few seconds. I don't know why that is. Oh, let me just mention really quickly. Um, the maps. We did this using um, OpenStreetMaps and it's using Leaflet and the code is up on uh, GitHub. That's interesting. And mm. another question is, I use the metric uh, function, and isn't it set forever? I just send a trick and it didn't show me any results. Right. We, we had something expire with Docker that it's not letting us bring it up. But br going back to your first comment, mm. I is there is there a, a sidewalk inventory? Where's Tom? Pitzel? Okay. So, I mean, when you, earlier when you were talking about Google Maps, like routing walk, people walking down the sidewalk, it just assumes right. there's a place to walk. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yes? I mean, this probably goes back to what you were saying earlier, but um, like, let's say there's construction that suddenly shows up in the street. Like, you know, someone logged it, someone logged it specifically as like a temporary type of incident, like, like okay, there's construction, it will go away at some point as long as it has a problem, but, you know, it's considered to be logged and it will go away. And then there was exactly that. Yeah, that's interesting you say that. So that's, uh, and, and Luke says the more audience we have, the more we can do. So if something's gone away, we can do it through crowdsource. But the other thing that he was looking at doing was taking a look at um, building, uh, at um, permits for, for uh, street repair. Um, and seeing if he can um, correlate that as well. That doesn't help you when, when, the, when there's a, a crack in the street or something like that, but it does help you in that very dangerous time when the street's been scraped away. It's a good idea. What, what I was curious about was, how does Waze do it? So you report an accident. At what point does it clean that off? Right. Yeah. Mm. Anyone know? Mm. People. Probably people. Really? Well, that goes back to Steve's point. The more audience they have for it, the more they can do. Yes, sir.
Oh, inside buildings, yeah. Not initially. Um, one of the things Steve has been doing has been working with uh, Karen Tamley, the commissioner for the Mayor's Office of People with Disability, to see how that kind of information um, can be made publicized and then what kinds of things we can do with it. Your point about um, different equipment is spot on because we have three different types of chairs in the room here. Theodore is managing with um, probably the, the lightest and could probably get down more things than Steve. And then Pat's uh, managing with a different type of chair altogether that um, seems a lot more nimble and, and a lot lighter. Um, but Steve's got equipment on his. All right. So, yes? Um, I'm wondering if adding a severity level would also be interesting. Um, That's a great idea. Great idea. Her, her suggestion, it's a phenomenal one, is adding a severity level and maybe coming up with some criteria for how you rank that severity. Yeah, Chris. I wonder if people would be willing to get notifications when they're near um, an existing spot that's been marked as able to get through so that they could, hey, you're walking right past the place that's been reported. Is how does it still, look? Uh, Did you catch that? That's a great one. The other thing I was thinking about was um, could that be done using SMS text messaging as opposed to this because I was thinking about this stuff that M Relief does and you know how could that be applied to a, just a different audience? Yeah, like That's a, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, sir. So Steve says that's where the map comes in, so we can know when it's up and ready. But the alderman, the alderman said it can. Oh yeah, that's right. So, but the alderman said it can take years. Um, but once it's actually started, I, I think because I've seen this on Open Grid, I think that they have a target end date. Yes, in the back. Um, I guess I was thinking about the follow-up and when to mark something as like, you know, this issue has been closed or when to get mm. an update picture or something. Um, mm. And have you considered having people who, mm. uh, you know, <coughs> aren't dependent on like a uh, mobility assistance device, like being able to sign up and maybe they can, you know, grab a phone yeah. where they follow up on some of these things yep. and take pictures? Yep. That, uh, Luke says that's the idea. Steve said, that's the idea, because if I encounter an issue, I don't go back. That's a great idea. And, and Chrissy's idea, I'm, I'm really intrigued by that. That's a, a great idea, too. Yes? Not today. Not today. Oh, at, I'm sorry, at a, at a CTA station? Oh, uh, not yet. Theater. I heard somebody say about the alderman mm. because I know I've talked to my alderman about some things. Is there a way to have so many people call the alderman and have contact with the alderman to make the pressure to get it down faster because it's going to take a long time? Yeah, flood, flooding your alderman's office is always a best practice. <laughs> uh, or, or whoever you can contact. No, I, uh, your alderman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, S S Steve says that one of the updates that he'd like to do is um, once you report uh, 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 something that needs to be repaired, it pops up the proper alderman f for that sidewalk. So I think we have time for one more question. Last question. Yes, in the back. Steve had mentioned how treacherous ice can be yeah. in the winter. Have you thought of asking Drainage that could be reported in warmer months before it gets cold, like a 
sewer that's backed up, stopped up or something. Ah, uh, yeah. He said that's a great application of the array of things. Great. Um, I just want to take a second and uh, thank Steve. He is a leader in his community and multiple communities.